Thank you, Senator Borges. Senator Melendez. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, I rise in opposition to this bill. Um, I, you know, there was a comment made that um, there is no medical reason for this not to be law, and I, I wholeheartedly disagree. Uh, John Hopkins, since April 2021, have reported there have been more than 1,000 cases of myocarditis and pericarditis in children happening after the COVID vaccination. I would say that's a very good medical reason. Um, not to mention the medical reason for when a child might have some underlying medical issue or perhaps is taking some other medication that might um, cause an adverse effect after getting a particular vaccination and that minor child not telling the person administering the vaccine that they're taking that medication or that they have that family history or that they have that particular medical condition. If you're talking about a 12 year old, I mean, you know, many of you in here have kids, some of you still have kids in the home like I do, and you know that kids that young have difficulty remembering a lot of things, let alone any particular medication or medical um, illness, you know, that they may have that they would need to divulge to the person administering the vaccine. Not to mention, if this minor child goes and gets this vaccination and doesn't tell their parents, how in the world is a parent supposed to be able to recognize that something is going wrong after getting that vaccination? How would a parent know that that's what it is caused by and then know how to seek the proper medical care? Particularly if, as many have pointed out, there are parents who are just too busy to take their kids to go get vaccinated. Well, if the parents are busy and working and not there to see that there's some sort of adverse reaction, how are they going to help them? If the parents don't know that the child got the vaccination, how would they know to even keep an eye out for it, to watch for it, if they are at their second job? Maybe perhaps tell an older sibling or their caretaker, hey, keep an eye out for any, any of these sorts of symptoms in my child. They wouldn't know that. They wouldn't know that. And I think that is unfair and unreasonable to do to a child or to any parent out there who just wants to keep their child safe irrespective of whether or not they believe in any particular vaccine, because there has been a lot of discussion about this being about the COVID vaccine, but this bill doesn't relate only to the COVID vaccine, although I think that's largely what has dominated people's minds at this point. Um, the other issue with this bill is I'm not entirely sure that it's um, legal. The National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act states each healthcare provider who, administ who administers a vaccine set forth in the vaccine injury table shall provide to the legal representatives of any child or to any other individual to whom such provider intends to administer such vaccine, a copy of the vaccine information statements supplemented with visual presentations or oral explanations in appropriate cases. And that has to be administered prior to giving the vaccine. So if you give a minor this vaccination and you hand them the booklet of all the different adverse reactions that may take place, do you trust that that minor will read it? <laughs> do you trust that that minor will give it to an adult in their life who may be watching over them, that they will give it to them? Probably not, particularly if their parents or their, or their health or their, their provider, their, you know, whoever's taking care of them, doesn't even know they're getting it. You're, this puts children at risk. I know there are people in this room who firmly believe that every child should get this vaccine, whether it's the COVID vaccine or any other. I understand that. But I think you're not looking at the reality of the situation, which is this could actually cause very serious harm to children. There is a reason that there is a database that tracks adverse reactions to vaccinations, not just the COVID vaccine, but all vaccinations. There's a reason for that. And there's a reason there is a fund that has been set up that has paid out nearly $5 billion to those who have been injured or, or died from the administration of a vaccine, almost $5 billion. Why is that? Because these things do happen. Largely, vaccinations are administered and there are no serious side effects, but guess what? There are many other instances where there are. So I am asking you 
to please consider the health of these children. Please consider that you are putting parents in a terrible situation where they would have no idea that their child might be having some sort of reaction to this vaccine and have no ability to help them because they don't even know that it's going on. I urge a no vote. Thank you, Senator Melendez. Senator